Good evening and welcome to the Star Chamber Show live podcast. It is a great Wednesday evening here in Lexington, Kentucky, where I'm broadcasting to you live from right as an AEW wrestling event goes on in Rupp Arena. But I'm here with you to give you a great show tonight, and it's going to be a great one. Got a fantastic guest. We've had quite a run of good shows lately. If you missed them, recent shows, oh, catch up with the last three for sure, because we had Heather Graham, Dan Stidham, and Jonathan Mayberry. Jonathan was just on last week. That was a phenomenal show. And yeah, we've been on quite a roll, and that does not let up tonight. Uh, we got great guests coming up for you in just a few minutes. And joining me on the co-hosting side of things tonight from Indiana is the loquacious, the vivacious, the wonderful Holly Phillippe. Holly, are you online? I am here in the house. And I got to see Holly this weekend, so that was you awesome. You did. You did. Uh, it had been a while. I got to go up to Indiana to see Holly, where she is right now, and got to finally spend some time with her and even take her out to dinner. And it was a, it was very nice. It was, it was wonderful yes. to see Holly again. I got me a big old margarita. Yes. And yeah, I've got a fantastic picture of that to prove her, to prove it, to prove it, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to pr prove that she did that. <laughs> and um, yeah, we had a good time. Definitely. And well, I mean, Shikali was definitely bu busy as well. because She's still caretaking for her, her mother. Uh, but we did receive the good news that Holly yes. may be coming back a little earlier than the doctors initially anticipated. So yes. yes and mom is actually able to bear weight now, which, ah, oh, that takes a load off of me. But uh, she's yeah. got to go slow. She still has the brace on. We got to start physical therapy. And, um, yeah, it's going to be a little slow process. But originally it was going to be 10 weeks. And now it looks like we're going to get that down to four weeks. So four That's more weeks. A big reduction, a big reduction for sure. Yes. So I'm yes. very happy and everybody here is. And yes, yeah, so folks keep the prayers and, and everything coming. Let's let's hope that that works and she gets back early because uh, we've certainly missed her. Uh, we've been holding the line and fighting the good fight. And and as I'm about to uh, share with you, yes, I mean, we've still kept busy, by God. <laughs> well, yes, <laughs> yes, busy. I'm still yeah. working here yes. too, yes, yes. Yep, and uh, lots of Imaginarium updates to give you since just last Wednesday. Uh, quite, a, quite a few, to be honest. Uh, yeah, definitely. We had a, a very busy week of announcements, and yeah, it's uh, looking good, though. I mean, we've got, um, let's see, just since uh, last Wednesday's show, uh, we announced uh, several uh, new panelists, a uh, bunch of them actually. And so, yeah, I'm going to go through all of them and uh, some of them are new faces. Some of them are returning folks. And so, yeah, you're going to, of course, love them all. And uh, yeah, of course we have author, podcaster, and poet S. A. Bradley, who's definitely an Imaginarium favorite coming back as is author Melinda Andrews. And Melinda will also be in the expo hall as well as a vendor. And then also coming as panelists are author, book blogger, Marilyn Barr, and author, editor, Kelly Ferguson. And we just saw Kelly not too long ago at the LaGrange Book Fair up in LaGrange, Kentucky with uh, good old Tony Acri, who hopefully he's, he's listening somewhere out there and doing well. Um, and then returning after a few years away is the awesome Elliot Park Parker. And he is an author, podcaster. We've had him on the show here great guy, great writer. And yes, he's coming back to Imaginarium and uh, joining uh, him is with, uh, for the first time uh, to Imaginarium is author Ava Cuvay. And we're very happy to welcome to Imaginarium. Definitely, uh, definitely great to have new faces. Also a new panelist for the first time is author, artist, Chad Elliott. Holly and I happen to know Chad well, very talented uh -huh. guy, super good guy, super good guy. Yeah, you definitely yes, are going to absolutely love him. He's He's, He's going to do a, a workshop for me. It's going to be yeah. very interesting. Very, uh, very big teddy bear kind of personality. Uh, just yes, yes. always full. His humor is great. He sends us jokes on a regular basis. On and loves all things steam. Enough. Yes, all things steampunk. Yeah, he's he's a wizard at that. Cosplays that, and uh, often uh, you'll see him hanging out at Jennifer Naran's table. You know the uh, the good uh, captain of the airship uh, Caduceus. And then we have uh, also coming back is another Imaginarium favorite of ours, S. Cinders. She's a graphic designer, cover designer, and an excellent author. 
And then uh, just today, we announced author, poet, Jessica Minyard, and who is someone who is listening to the show right now, longtime Star Chamber show listener, multi-award winning screenwriter and author of the Nathan Perry mystery series, the one, the only Carol Free Flattish. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> so we're doing a, a, some, some, some celebrating of Carol today for sure. And yeah, definitely, Carol. Always <laughs> love to have you. You're um, your favorite at the convention. You're a favorite of Holly is and mine personally, and definitely, uh, definitely great to to have you aboard. And I saw you've been uh, having some uh, riding outdoors lately. Uh, she was doing yeah. some riding on her, on her back uh, deck uh, out in the out in the sun, and and uh, evidently uh, found that uh, environment very productive. So, yeah, go Carol, go Carol. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it's been hot. Carol yeah, said it was hot. hot. <laughs> been hot so yeah definitely was cool to see those posts uh from carol and uh definitely go about and uh, yeah personally since i i served as editor on them i know them well and they are outstanding mystery uh novels but check out the nathan perry mystery series they are they are all good books there's four of them uh, murder and mystic hollow of course is the new one and uh carol needs to pop on here and and uh do a guest yes. show with us that's soon perfect. sooner than later so yes. yeah Carol, yeah drop us a note and let us know if you would like to do that because yeah she's she's just great and she's got so much going on so much cool stuff going on writing wise and always up to adventures and she recently went to bowsher con had uh, she was out in the road and and i think she saw heather graham actually not too long ago yeah she said she was going to try to yeah that's cool that is cool and uh, yeah, I don't know if Carol got to catch our show with Heather, but that I think she would love it. Uh, the one two weeks, uh, three weeks ago, and uh, but yeah, that was a that was a great show as well. Um, but yeah, that's all the updates I have uh, on my end, Holly, as far as the convention. So, uh, is there anything any notes you'd like to give folks before we share with them uh, the folks that uh, brought tonight's show to you? Well, let's get on to sponsors so we can get our right. guest on because that's going to be a great show. Will do. We will go right to it. And um, yeah, again, I will mention just real briefly, though, folks, you have about two weeks left to get discounts. We do this for our regulars so you guys can save a chunk of money on the vendor spaces and on event tickets. So please don't let that pass by. We do that for our regulars. And uh, we've got about two more weeks to take advantage of that. And uh, also, yeah, we, we would love, we've got some great possibilities we can bring in as some, some major guests that we have uh, been uh, uh, looking into. And uh, sponsorships are largely what help us do that, bring in a couple more. Yeah. So please do look at our sponsorships. They, uh, we've got a couple levels that aren't even that much more than Expo Space. Um, really uh, some good options there. They're not that, that high. And uh, then, of course, we do have the individual patrons, and those definitely all help us uh, with bring, making the commitments to bring in some uh, other imaginator-type guests. Uh, so definitely please um, yeah, take a look at that, too. Uh, just make a brief appeal there. But tonight's show is brought to you by Sandy Lender, the genre blender. And by next week, I will be able to give you some comments on a new project of hers. Yes, which I'm reading finishing up a book of hers right now and uh she's going to talk about it in in this uh, little bit and then our other uh sponsor tonight is the awesome Aren Garcia who always asks the great question but tonight we'll give you Sandy first and then we'll go over to Ren but here is Sandy What happens when you accidentally schedule a Krampus movie on the Hallmark channel You get Silver Bells by Sandy Lender Silver Bells is a Christmas horror story and it will be available in print and ebook on Friday the 13th of September, just in time for Halloween and Christmas greetings. Join Sandy during her online tour for Silver Bells during September. Then join the mature main character, Ivy Light, as she navigates the paranormal upset of spiritual warfare at Reindeer Creek. Finally, Join the mayhem of Silver Bells by Sandy Lender when you pre-order and purchase your copy on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all your favorite e-platforms. Thank you, Sandy Lender. And yes, I am finishing up that book as, as we speak, because I'm definitely going to give her a blurb that she can use if she would like. Uh, she's just such a great writer, and it's such a good book. So I recommend you pick it up. Pick it up. And uh, here is a little bit from Ren. So here we go. The 
The League of Elder dares to be unusual. It's easy to be swept away in this bold and uninhibited landscape where fantastic heroes become old friends and sinister villains inhabit every dark corner. Dare to explore things best left alone. Each book is your lantern lighting the path to a world never before seen. So what do you say? Are you weird enough for us? We are indeed weird enough for Ren Garcia. We definitely are. And yes, folks, uh, as we always say, yeah, keep nudging him. We need to see him in person. Now next <laughs> we need to get him back to Louisville. <laughs> get him back and get him out of Columbus for just a while. He lives up in Columbus, Ohio. But yeah, Ren. Yeah, we love you, Ren. You are awesome. And thank you for your longtime support of the show. And so, yes, I'm going to come over now and introduce tonight's guest just a couple of minutes early uh, from when we usually bring guests on because our guest is ready. So, yes, tonight uh, I'm bringing to you one a, a really, really amazing multifaceted talent. Uh, he is a filmmaker, a screenwriter, a musician, an artist, a game designer, a cosplayer. And if that's not enough, he's also the CEO of Royalty Virtue Company, which is an entertainment company and record label. And so welcoming tonight for the very first time to the Star Chamber show, and who's also a spotlighted guest at Imaginarium 2025, I introduce to you the amazing Darrell Miller. And Darrell, your microphone is on. We should be connected. Hey, hi, everybody. How are you doing? There you are. Well, hello. There he is. I finally get to talk to him. Uh, yes. Uh, we have been sending me. messages back and forth, but I haven't heard your voice. Yes. <laughs> except for, Thank except you so for watching much. some YouTube. I did watch some of your videos, I have to admit. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. You know, it's, it's fun. I really love what we're doing, you know. I'm I telling you, what is going on in Indianapolis? Because uh, another uh, good friend of ours who I just, I'm, I'm always amazed by Demetrius Witherspoon. I mean, he's got, you know, films yeah. and the comic books, novels, and all kind. I mean, just everywhere you look, animated series. That man is so great at, at, yeah. at the swag. I mean, he's got yeah. everything and you all could that. possibly imagine. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then here and here you are and and you've got you know, you know films and screenplays and you know record label and your game designer and you know got a game which we're going to talk about tonight is coming out soon your cosplayer and uh, yeah. and man, i'm like why cool. has darrell never been a guest at imaginarium i read all this and i'm like steven um <laughs> Uh, we need to talk to this young gentleman. I'm going to get a hold of him. I'm like, yeah. uh, yes, we need him because yeah, you definitely. encompass everything that we encompass and, yeah. and you're just going to be such a great addition and you're going to love it. Yes. Thank you so much. Well, Demetrius is, is my mentor actually. And I, Very I had, um, yeah, we can talk all the time. We was at PopCon oh, wow. talking. Yeah, we, <laughs> well, he, we're friends with Demetrius, so yeah. you, you tell him we said hello, and he'll be like, "You know Holly and Stephen." <laughs> yeah, I think you know I'm on this show right now. Well, and also, he? um, he helped me in so many ways of just growing, you know, being more professional and being creative. Me and him help each other a lot. Like we was at PopCon and talking, and I love like his table, and I get so inspired by the things he's doing and continue with doing, you know, with his uh, submerge. And I, oh, you know, he had, and it's just amazing with the comics, the card games and stuff like that. So me and him got similarities in creativity that we bounce ideas with each other. And he's just an amazing guy to just to be around cool. with. Yeah, he's definitely, a, is, is an inspiration to me too. Does that In all the world. Yeah, long time yeah. supporter. Yeah, he's been so, so cool to, to know and and yeah just always encouraging yeah right. fun fact though uh imaginary because of him he introduced me he had me to submit my perigenics web series i don't know if y'all remember i think yes. it's like 2021 or two i yes. submitted for the web yeah. series 
He mm -hmm. was the reason why I submitted there. And when y'all gave me that, that was the first film award I ever won with my team. And oh, wow. that was such a great moment. Like I knew like we can go somewhere with this because that was the first time I actually really tried filmmaking and doing my own creative, like, you know, a film idea project. And just to get that award from you, from you, your company, from you guys, it meant a lot to me. Well, oh, I mean, well, thank you. I I am so happy that you uh, you you found us and, and yeah. through Demetrius. Thank you, Demetrius. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, sure yeah. he'll listen to the show. <laughs> later. Later. And it's, that's well deserved because it's gotten competitive, and we have a of course oh. it's a juried award. So anybody that wins, I mean, that's a that's a real uh, honor, you know, mm -hmm. for you. It's a I mean, statement. It's a statement. Yeah, so, so yeah. what made you want to get into to filmmaking? Because I know, I mean, well, let's start at the beginning. What started first? Did it start your your music passion, a passion for that, or did it start with uh, cosplay? Where where did you start? Uh, first I started, I mean, I was a hip hop, you know, dancer and, but I didn't want to do it as a career. So I did hip hop, me and my brothers, we was working on music together in Indianapolis, Indiana. And then around 2014 or 15, I started to be a solo artist. And during that time, I was trying to figure myself out as an artist. Cause I love all genres that I wanted to blend everything with, uh, hip hop. But when I was creating my own label after learning um, from my mentor, Romeo Gearson, uh, it kind of went on a bad slope because I would just learn about how, learning how to own a record label. So things didn't go the way I wanted to. So I was like, let me take a break from the music side and just do something different. I was like, I never acted before, but I'm pretty sure it's not that bad. And I always write scripts and things like that. So I wrote my first project called The Boy in the Darkness. It's like a supernatural werewolf urban short film. And I had fun filming it. So I decided to do my own superhero because I'm a nerd uh, and I create comics and things like that. So I wanted to create my own original superhero to be different from Marvel in DC. So I made Paragenix. And I just, I ain't had no money really like that, but my brother Christian Griffith and other people from Indianapolis helped me to bring this project along. We worked with over like 60 some people on this project. Oh, and wow. Just, and we had fun. I was working with kids and adults. It was stressful because I ain't know nothing about how to film like all the, you know, professional script writing or anything like that. I just had a vision and what I wanted to do, but I had to add people to help me make it more professional. And at the end, it, it was great. It took a couple of years to get finished with VFX and editing, but we loved, I loved the quality and how it looked. So we pushed it into film festivals and yours was one of the first ones I submitted to and a few others and people enjoyed it and liked it. It's still on YouTube right now for free. So we just had fun and that would make me really love filmmaking. Wow. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> That is awesome. Yeah. And, and it's nice to see that, you know, a team uh, came together because I know in film, that's so important getting the, you know, the people, you know, are willing to help you, you know, make that first project and get it off the ground. And, and uh, yeah, that's some, that had to be a, a great experience and help you get at least a, a group together. You can go forward with that. You got to know. Yeah. And got yes. to know. Yeah, because that's a that's a, a that, that, like we said, we always call it a tribe. We always say, find yeah. your tribe. You, yes. you find your, your, you, you know, your group of individuals that you just bounce the ideas off of and make it happen. You know, mm -hmm. where one lacks, the other one has the strength and yes. we lift each other up because it takes a village. As you know, um, yes. you wear many hats in the indie mm -hmm. world, whether it's film, music, writing, you know, whatever you, you wear many hats and mm -hmm. uh, it, it takes a good tribe to, to pull that off. It does. Yes, it does. And now is your uh, now I know that recently at Popcom you were selling some of your comics and are they um tied to the characters that were in your film projects or uh, tell us a little bit about your comic work? Mm -hmm. Uh no, it's actually a different project. Um it, it's it's called Virtual Viral Expeditions about um five friends that the video gamers and stuff and they enter this tournament. And they eventually something happens where they end up getting video game powers from it. But the video game 
dimension and the real world combines, which gives them their power, all individual powers, which they had to live with in the real world. So instead of going to the video game world, I wanted to create something different where it's in the real world. So then you get the, you know, health bars, you get the the level ups and they feel it in their body. So I just wanted to be creative in that way. And um, I created this like five years ago, my first issue and then my second issue as well. But it, but it cost me a lot of money. Uh, and I sold my first 50 issues at a local comic book shop downtown. Down, it's, I think it's Comic Indie or Downtown Comics, downtown nice. Indianapolis. And I sold 50 and I was happy, you know. So I was like, let me do it again after a couple years later, see if I can do it again. So I went to PopCon with my table and me and my uh, big brother, Keith, uh, he helped me to sell the uh, other 50 there and i was just i was just happy that people was even interested of hearing about it or wanting to know more about it or even help you know help purchase the comics so i was just happy about that that people was giving me a chance being a new um author comic you know writer mm -hmm. yeah comics aren't easy to put together at all i mean that's, no. a, that's a project and uh yeah congratulations on that that's Thank awesome you. Um, do, is, do you do your own illustrations yeah. or do you have an illustrator illustrator that's what costs the most because i don't draw huh. like i used to so mm -hmm. i use fiverr um i had a, mm -hmm. a great uh talented lady um uh, who from mexico who created my like she took that's my ideas and yeah she took my ideas and description and put it you know put it on paper and digitally and she did amazing work so i'll keep trying to use her but it's like money you know what i'm saying sometimes yeah, sure. I'll, I'll be best in the other things so i want to get back to like my issue three and and the rest because it's like 20 i think 21 22 issues um in my whole story that i want to finish up but you know money goes to different things so hopefully later i can get back on it and release more comics yeah and print yeah you can sell, sell more copies of those first mm -hmm. couple issues. yeah, yeah I and i, I am glad good. to hear I, i'm glad to hear that you you found her fiverr i know we've heard horror stories and then <laughs> we've always had such great luck i mean we have found a phenomenal yeah artist we work with um olivia designs once well, yeah, we, we had we introduced yeah we introduced her then but now yes. yeah, work yeah works work with her and yeah she's great. i mean she's phenomenal yeah. she does stevens uh, you know several stevens titles and mm -hmm. and she's just great to work with and mm -hmm. and i think there's some very talented people on there and it also gives people from other countries the the uh ability and the mm -hmm. outlet you know to to put themselves out there to yeah. Americans that they would have never had, you know, no other chance to do that. So I, I think it's a wonderful thing. Yeah. yeah and right. you're helping each other out. Like, you know, you know, sometimes our money can be worth more in a country. So you looking at it, you're helping them survive and eat, take care of their family. They help you right. get your projects done or your ideas out. So it, mm -hmm. everybody helping each other and stuff in a good way. Now, occasionally, you know, you come through some, you know, some dead eggs and, you know, some bad ones, but most, right. majority, if you don't feel safe, you can get your money back. If you, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You can. Right spot somebody yeah. else and all that. That's why I think it's safer. Most businesses, when they're dealing with people you don't know, I always use mm -hmm. Fiverr for people, you know, if you don't know somebody like personally that will help you out, like I use Fiverr a lot. Yep. Yeah. And you can also look at their portfolios and their previous mm -hmm. work. And, mm -hmm. and when you look at the previous work, you can see the names of the people they did it for and you can reach out yeah, to those people. Yeah, that people. And get a yeah. reference. And, and that's mm -hmm. that's usually how I work when I find somebody. But it's uh, it's great to, to hear this. And, and I love uh, independent comics. I mean, it's been, a I think, a, a resurgence of interest in them and a great market. And I think, mm -hmm. and one of the things that you might even look at, um, but, I, but I, 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 you, I'd love to hear your comments on it. But I think one of the things that's really helped the indie comic world are, are, are like crowdfunding, like uh, the Kickstarter. Yes. I mean, yes. I've seen some incredibly successful comic stuff um, funded on, on Kickstarter that just is completely indie. And um, mm -hmm. that might be a route for you to help help um, cover everything from the beginning or get yeah. your copies covered. Because now you've got some work to show. I mean, now you've got a couple yes. of issues. I mean, that might be a, a good mm -hmm. option because 
I mean, there's been some insanely successful stuff that's just been completely indie on there. Oh yeah. And, then, and then a friend of ours, Peter Welmerink, did did several uh, successful uh, mm -hmm. Kickstarters to do issues for his comics, his, yeah. his comic series. And um, so that's that's something definitely. I, I think just just you know unsolicited advice, but I think that would help you with uh, covering the budget side of it for sure. Yeah. Now, now that you have a couple. Yeah, no, you yeah. definitely right. And I'm being trying to work. And one of my things I'm trying to really learn, like work on is marketing because I'm not good at marketing like that. Like I know social media is so big and, you know, hashtags and stuff like that. So I'm still trying to learn as I don't have somebody I can pay to handle you know, yeah. my marketing right now. So I am trying to get better and marketing more and pushing myself out there, being seen, like, you know, the more you've seen, the more people can pay attention to what you're doing, kind of be annoying to them where they like, oh, let me check out what they got because I keep seeing this a, a, a lot, you know what I'm saying? So I am working on ways to build my fan base and to build backers, to get investors, um, to say, right. hey, I see something in him. He got something good. He just need a little bit more polishing, professional work. He just need this money. Let's help push his stuff. So that's I want people to see my potential or mm -hmm. what it can be. You know what I'm saying? Like right. and, and be like, let's grow it. Let's build it. So I you definitely right about crowdfunding and you know helping give me the funds to help push my uh my work. Yeah, I've just seen a lot with indie comics. Uh, you know, filmmakers yeah. obviously use it uh, quite often, but but I have seen a lot of success with uh, smaller level indie comic uh, uh, creators and yeah. uh, people people that don't have like you know huge names, and they've been able to you know show show some of their work, and they've yeah. gotten support. And yeah, it's been it's a good it's a good time to be doing that. And uh, there's there's definitely um, uh, you know so several platforms to crowdfund on now. It's not yeah. just Kickstarter, but others. There are several others. But um, you, I mean, I, I definitely can't wait to see your comic work because I, I, I happen to love indie comic stuff, and uh, definitely want to take a look at that. Uh, but um, but you've got. Um, but I do want to get a bit, little bit into your music background because I think it's it's awesome. As you know, reading about your music and and how you you incorporate you know a lot of in, different influences into yeah. your musical and, work. and you and promote it as clean like clean yeah yeah music. so i do my manager is sid jams he's from indianapolis indiana he's best friends with Babyface. uh i'm signed to him for about i think almost my second year with me cap music um and he does nothing but clean music and have clean artists so and I've always been the type of person that i want to get back and be able to perform in front of families and kids because I deal with kids and teenagers and, and parents. So I want to be able to, my music can be listened to by them without them like, uh, like, a, uh, like basically having a uh, block to their uh, kids or something like that. Like, oh, you right. can listen to this. So I wanted to make music. It's still cool to make clean music, still cool to be positive, still cool to tell your story without cussing or being you know violent or anything like that so i try to work hard to push that out even though it might not seem as cool in the hip-hop genre i'm still going to push it out no matter what because that's something i really believe in and when i go to conventions like um gen con pop con comic con and, and other conventions it's like i want to open up doors for other clean musicians to perform there mm -hmm. because i think that's a good audience me being a nerd i make i make nerd music as well like anime cartoon superhero mute type of music i would love to perform in front of those fans and be like yo and show them it's a different side than what they used to on the radio or in the media of bad hip-hop songs or violence or things they don't want their kids or family to listen to i want right. to open up that's one of my goals um throughout is to perform in front of people say hey there are artists that's that you can listen to there are positive there are things there are artists that can be entertaining without the stigma of just being you know gangsters or or violent or uh drugged out and things like that i don't want that mm -hmm. um to be the stigma you know what i'm saying so right. in my musical stuff like i my favorite artist michael jackson but i listen to backstreet boys i grew up on you know um leaking park i grew up listening yes. to, to phil collins i li grew up listening to so many different genres of music from country to pop to rock and creed you know what i'm saying uh yes. just different 
variety of artists so i don't like to tie myself to just one genre or listen to because i always believe you can let you can you could take something from other genres and mix it into my uh, to your own music depending 100%. on how you feel it so that's what i like to do with my music so when you when you record um do you have a a regular producer you worth work with or do you self-produce um what's your recording situation like right now uh uh, I don't like besides working with my cousin Telly and my bro Dre D and uh like I I like to to work with so many and my uh friends sound uh, sound from Mars he's from Brooklyn New York like I like to I like to work with different type of producers because you never know what sound like mm -hmm. they inspire you you don't know what the you know you build relationships so right now I'm always open to work with anybody who feel like they my sound will fit with they beats you know what i mean and and with me i always have fun by trying different beats just to have fun on doing something that most people are not comfortable with trying yeah, so blending blend the genres yeah, which, which, yeah which i think is fantastic and yeah and because it's awful to, to stick yourself in a corner and you, mm -hmm. you know you don't want to be like everybody else you want to do something yeah. different you want to step outside of the box and and i think that's very brave and and kudos to you thank you thank you yeah, that's really mm -hmm. interesting and uh and i and kudos for for being a, a independent recording label in this day and age yeah I know the music yeah. is not That's easy, and, and I hear I hear horror stories all the time from from friends of mine that are in bands and whatnot. But but it's uh, as far as far as you know, just how hard it is right now. Uh, but uh, you know, you started a uh, you know, royalty virtue, uh, and mm -hmm. that's been been yours for for a while now. And uh, so mm -hmm. yeah, that's not an easy thing to uh, to accomplish this this no. day and age. But is that no, no, not, how many oh, artists sorry. do work for you, or is it primarily? Um, like you with your projects, or do you have some other artists that are you're working with right now at Royalty uh, Virtue? Uh, right now it's just me right now. But I used to have like my nephew. I used to have like my cousins, friends that I grew up with, or people mm -hmm. like I meet, and even my sister at the point of time. But it, it, when you get older, everybody has that different way of of they dream and passion and i i'm not gonna lie like i messed up as a owner by not having the pieces to help them grow so i take responsibility as an owner of mm -hmm. not having the right uh team around them to build them up and me as an artist too it, it's kind of hard to still be an artist and a business owner when you got artists you you want to you know pay attention to which i do but okay you ain't putting your full energy towards them because you myself is an artist and not having the money to push their records like how they want to or do things the way they want to it, it leads to people going in separate ways i still love them i still talk to them I'll make sure they good they you know they talk to me sometimes you know sometimes so it's, it's still love and it's honesty to say I, i'm honest enough to say it's not working out right now i'm sorry to waste your time or not have the right. pieces for y'all but hopefully in the future if things really work out in the future that i would love to revise this if if everybody's still down to do it like and this is the things you learn and grow even when owning a business like sometimes when you have a, uh, a a company, you're gonna lose certain people. Some people that you even grew up with years that, that watch you develop, you might not even work with them as much or not even at all, you know what I'm saying? Right. Or it'd be new people come in your life and y'all work perfectly. Think life just happened different and crazy where you just gotta take it, learn from it. Don't get too personal, don't get too angry. Learn, right. see what you can do better. It just keep moving on like i think that's something i think people appreciate me no matter how bad i do or i down it seems like i always gonna look like it's positive in, in it somehow some way i don't give up i uh -huh. always just find a different strategy to try to make that goal if that's really something i really want to accomplish yeah, right it and, and yeah. can open other doors you know yes. um, you got you know do you have like uh, if somebody would be interested and in maybe having you help them produce or, uh, you know, joining your record label, do you have any like um, uh, submission requirements or how can they get a hold of you to possibly collaborate with you on something? Uh -huh. It's easy. 
Yeah. Yeah. E easy. I'm like I say, any genre, like I've always been open. I always wanted my label to be not just hip hop. I want to be all forms of, of music. And it's easy, like Facebook, Instagram, too. Any way you, or if you know somebody that knows me, you could get a, a touch with me anyway, or not just email. You could personally inbox me in any social media, but like, hey, Darrell, I, I heard that you got a record label or you work with music, and I'm like, let me hear your music or a sample. Even if you had never recorded before, let me hear a sample of what you have, and I can tell you if I have a producer that can work with you, that probably could work with your sound, or we can help you write a song, or I would collab with you. I will do a feature with you, help you with the song, and we could shoot a video to it just so we can help push you. And I learned business. I tell people knowledge of music business because knowledge to me was free. Like I went to the library went and got a library book about record labels and i study on google about record labels how how it's really supposed to be and i give that knowledge to people for free because to me knowledge should be free i'm i don't one thing about me is i never fear another person's success so i would never have that right. where i would hide anything from you that can make you successful even if you don't work with me if you don't stop like i don't even do contracts like that like i don't do that because i'm i'm keep i want you to keep your word as a as an adult and as a person because I'm gonna be fine regardless if I'm by myself or I'm with other people, you know what I mean? But if you genuinely want to build with me or, and this and that, just be genuine and I'll do the best I can with what I have so we can accomplish that. And I'll tell you strategies we can do, be different from other people. What is your audience? What's your fan base? What I, I believe to be different from the other artists that's out here so we don't feel the same way like them and be boxed in or like right. everybody else sometimes, you know what I mean? So those are the things I have fun and enjoy with. It just personally just got to come just positive and understand it's a journey. It's not something that's going to quickly happen. You know what I mean? No. Like I'm not, I don't have millions of dollars or anything to push an artist. So it's a journey to it. And as long as you had that journey and willing to go through it, then I'm willing to work with you. I love working with new people. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, and I know the economics are tough because, I mean, when I talk yeah, to is. various bands, um, the thing today is, you know, if you make it and you're bigger, I mean, you can make money on live shows, merch, and merch, you, know, you yeah. don't really make a lot of money off the actual music. It's not like the old days where you sold a ton of CDs. I mean, it's mm -hmm. uh, everything has gone Spotify. Yeah. I mean, and the Spotify yeah. payouts are abysmally low. I mean, anybody yeah. looks into uh -huh. that, I mean, they don't pay out anything. I mean, you get right. thousands of plays and you get you know, 15 bucks for it. Right. And, uh, right. Crazy, yeah, because our podcast but, is on Spotify now. So, yeah, yeah you yeah. have to get like a well, I mean, major yeah, amount. A lot to get get any yeah. kind of real money. It's, it's, so I know it's hard. And But for, for like a, an artist on the indie level, it's even harder because a lot of these venues are, are pay to play. I mean, they make you sell yeah. your tickets or they, you have to buy your way onto a tour and buy a right. slot. Um, and, then, and then since you're not known, you can't sell a lot of merch merchandise i mean because you're not mm -hmm. known yet and so i mean mm -hmm. that's really hard and, then the, and if you're in, looking into independently pressing vinyl i mean which i love i love vinyl but it's uh, it, right. it's expensive it's it's really yeah. expensive it is expensive vinyl. you and, know uh, so so uh you know I, I imagine it's yeah that's probably uh you know you're talking about you know how, how mm -hmm. the money side it's it's that's mm -hmm. hard you know to, to get through mm -hmm. that with you know, with those kind of economic factors. I mean, yeah. to, and, and that's, that's where I think like crowdfunding mm -hmm. is, is such a great opportunity for people mm -hmm. because yeah. there's so many people out there that are passionate about these things, but maybe not have the talent, right? But right. they have some spare money and they are wanting to get into that world or just mm -hmm. help. They want mm -hmm. to help because they're so passionate about that particular, um, you know, area Dang. of talent, whether it be writing, whether it be records, whether it be, you know, whatever, um, they, they want to help. And there's good people out there, millions of people. And yeah, yeah it's just going on one of the yeah. sites, running the tour and, and seeing what you get, you know, um, yeah. we've known people that's been hugely successful and others right. that, you know, have, have not been as much, but yeah. I think yeah. it's all about what you put into it too, you know? Yeah. And I tell people it's all about content. If you allow people to, to, 
enter your world, it makes yeah. it more like a underdog. It makes people want to support you more. Personal. Like I tell artists, I tell artists when you're in the studio, you're writing a song, record it, video record it, so they can see the process. When you're uh -huh. You mm -hmm. know, say you in the studio or you or you writing a song, you listen to beats, your beat selections of uh, or yeah. just it, it, I think it's the issue with independent artists. We skip the artist development part. So you back in the day, sure. a lot of artists, either you had it naturally or you need a development from the label or the company to build your brand, to build your image and your mm -hmm. look, your style, what's going to draw people to you, make you feel like a superstar. Nowadays, it's like people skip the, the artist development, go straight to, hey, I want to just do this. I just want to record this. It's like it's more set now to it because there's so many artists now. It's so mm -hmm. many people try to try yeah, to rock the show. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you got to stand out in some way. And that's why yeah. me, I tell people my uh, my vision, why I want to do convention, nerd convention, because I'm a blur. You know what I'm saying? I'm a nerd. I, that, mm -hmm. That's my crowd. And once you know you're a crowd of audience, you need to study. I tell artists, take one year or six months to go to conventions and just study who's your audience, what music they like, what ask them questions uh get the vibe to it you learn first and then it gives you the knowledge to know what type of music you need to come out with what type of merchandise you need to come out with what um videos you can you know be uh creative with it, if that's really what you want to do it passion about because what you can make money you might not be a, a millionaire but you can make good money enough to take care of your bills and stuff like that you just gotta right. learn first and not just quickly jump into oh i'm a i'm a star or i'm i'm a artist and it's like like right. learn first when it means you gotta to be put in the work you yes. gotta put in the work yes yes you gotta have a manager a booking agent you gotta learn yeah. about the the contract like you gotta learn mm -hmm. even as an artist even though you want other people to do it you still gotta learn because you don't want to be around shady people or people wasting your time and you want to know where is your goal is so y'all your team that's the thing is you need a whole team just around one artist let alone a bunch of artists you you know it takes about four to, like at least three to five people for one artist to really blow up so mm -hmm. it, it, it is so it's just about hard work and being around the right people people that's actually successful people that's actually pushing their self to be successful you don't want to be around people your friends or something that's lazy and not doing anything or not trying to listen to your music or not try to help you with merchandise you know or help invest in you you got to be around people that's actually doing something so you can always be in that mindset to we gonna make it eventually yep building your group again there's that theme yes. building Build a tribe, tribe. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Then, you can, then you get to that point where you can sing that prince song baby i'm a star <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I just made, made me think of that when you're talking about that. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, it's a you do have to build a team. You do have to do a lot. And uh, and you mm -hmm. know, there's so many with with hip hop and everything, and even with rock and other things. I mean, yeah, the the, the look, the presentation, the social media platform. I mean, there's so many mm -hmm. hats you have to wear. And um, mm -hmm. and then when it comes to the actual um, side of being you know, a creative person, songwriter, and musician, do you mm -hmm. do you enjoy live performance more than being a re recording, or do you enjoy the studio more? And and why on each? Oh yeah. Ooh. Oh, that's a good question. I actually like yeah. perform. I mean, I used to be an introvert, so I used to be very scared. And even sometimes I get nervous being around like a new crowd or something like that. But once I hear my music or this, you know, get, you know, um, good vibes and stuff, I, I can go. But I do love being on a crowd. I love seeing people. I love getting people's expressions on how well I did or what I need to work on to be better. Um, with studio, the, the fun thing I love about studio, if I'm with my engineer and my producer, they help me with my music. So sometimes like they help me with my lyrics, like I write my lyrics, but they help edit my lyrics to make it get it perfect. And I love that about that because they want the song to be as great as I do. They're not just here 
pressure and record, stop and whatever get done, then they take my money and go. They actually right. care about the process of making a dope record like me and understanding my artist um, view as opposed to their own. So we work together as a team. So uh, I love both. But if I'm going to really say now that I'm really getting out of my comfort zone of being an a introvert, I really love performing on stage. I love being in front of people. I love to uh, rock the stage and and wild out and be loud and and get people's attention. People are like, wow, who is this young man and, and things. So that's what I really love doing, though. It's, it's fun to me. Do you demo on on a home studio, or do you uh, do you do you work with a, another studio another studio that's outside your your home? Or because I know home studios have come light years in the last twenty years. I mean, you could do major mm-hmm. label projects at home now. But uh, but how, how's your recording situation right now? Do you do you do you record at home, or do you uh, working with some studios around Indianapolis, or what's that like? Uh, it's sometimes both. Well, my my cousin built a studio, a professional studio in his uh in his house. So he got the studio, the booth, and everything. It's like a real studio. He just built it in his house. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, so I go there, or my brother, he got one in his garage that I I go to record too because I I love the engineering and stuff like that. So I was I done both, but both with both of them is like what you know whoever's open at the time like they can record me i go to either one and record and stuff like that so they both work for me very cool very cool yeah <laughs> look, definitely looking forward to seeing you perform and uh get um, more familiar with your music for sure after listening to, to you talk about it a bit and uh, but yeah i, I kind of figured you were uh uh you did like the live side of things because you're also yeah. a cosplayer and i know how yeah. I- yeah, I want to talk to you about that. <laughs> the cosplay. Yeah, I want to incorporate both. Like, actually, I want to perform in my cosplay suit. Hopefully, I don't rip like my costume, but I, the the Amazing. performance, whoever. Yeah, I want to perform in my cosplay suit. So tell well, tell us about. I, I know a I know a person that could let you do that. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Okay. Know, yeah, know. yeah, let's do it. <laughs> 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 but yeah, it's a. That's cool, yeah, because we love the world of cosplay. That's a lot of fun. Yes. And looking on your website, yeah, it looks like you were the just Power Rangers. It. I mean, you yeah, that yeah. is the amazing. Photos of you, that yeah, the photos is of you were great. I've yeah, never been watching on. Power Rangers since it come out. But you yeah. know, my oldest son, he was a Power Ranger fanatic when he was, you know, younger, and so I've been watching it since the originals. And <laughs> and yeah. I mean, your your suits are amazing. Thank you. I got it from Anarchy on Etsy.com. They like the best people. And it cost me thousands of dollars. So that's why it looks so good. And that's why I'm still paying them off to, to the day because I uh, just we just filmed two Power Ranger fan films. So I had to buy them. Very but cool. I love, yeah, like, yeah. um, uh, but being a cosplayer, I loved it because we used to, me and my best friends, we used to go to Comic Con and watch people dress up. Like, man, this is so fun. So I was like, I want to yeah. do this. So when I got my Spider Man Miles Morales uh, suit, and then I created my own superhero suit called Infinite Man, I wore that. People loved it. And then I started getting the Power Ranger suits and walking around. People want to take pictures with me. And I was like, I was like, this is so amazing. Kids took pictures with me. I was, man, the, the, to see kids smile is the best, like, experience for me in my career. Like, they, they take pictures with me. They have fun. They they get nervous at first, but when they take a picture, I was like, <laughs> this is so amazing. And then the actual Power Rangers um, a- actors and actresses love my suit, and we talk, and so I became kind of friends with them by, you know, go to Ranger Stop or going to uh, comic conventions and talking to them. It's so fun. My sister, Alicia, uh, she introduced me to the Power Rangers because she knows them personally, and I used to get nervous, uh, like, meeting them because that was, like, my childhood heroes, but what? after a while, you know how cool they are in person. I'm like, yo, this is dope. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's yeah. Awesome. yeah. Yeah, Holly knows the Power Rangers well. I'm not I'm not as familiar with them. I just know yes. that you, you your look is fantastic. And I and I encourage Thank everybody you. to go to your site and see some of the photos of you because they are so good. But uh Thank yeah, Holly, Holly's the expert on the show. <laughs> yeah. yes, I've followed them for quite some time. But we have yeah. a um, a question from the, the chat room. Um, okay. 
Dewan Hearn, or, or other known name, is yes. his name is Moon. Moon. Uh -huh. Moon in the house. Yes. Um, he's wanting to know if there's a Power Ranger fan video. Yes. Well, we can, um, our Power Rangers uh, trailer is on my YouTube on Royalty Virtue. If you just type in Power Rangers Demorph uh trailer it should pop up because our movie should be getting done right now just got a little bit of vfx to um to edit and fix and that movie uh should be coming out soon and then my second power ranger fan film will be coming out next year uh once i start to get it edited and vfx done um so yeah, I'm hoping hoping to put those in fan films or so. Uh, I know Morphin Con, Morphin Con came. It, I was late on that, so hopefully next year I can put it next year for fan films and stuff like that to put on. And so that's so cool. Yeah, and folks. Yeah, well, well, Moon said he would definitely be checking it out. I will too. Oh, I, I, yeah, I and, type, and type this in the chat room, Holly, if you could. But I do yeah. want to point out for the listeners that he said royalty virtue. Make sure you spell it correctly. Yes correctly r-o-y-a-l-t-i yes Royal t with an i yes r-o-r-t-u-e -E. yes. so virtue yes. just standard spelling but royalty with an i instead of a y at yes. the end there. so uh, make sure you get that right because it'll his his stuff will come up if you if you googled the company name i mean it comes yeah. up very very quickly and you'll Thank find you find him very easily but Thanks. um yeah this is this is this is cool i mean i think the power rangers are awesome and uh yeah, yeah you <laughs> that's some that's some physicality though to pull that off though i mean that's uh <laughs> those guys are that's some action stuff yeah so you, right you be, yeah do you, do you train in martial arts and all that because <laughs> that's a, I, I used, that's, I used yeah. to as a kid uh i'm more like with my hands up bo like boxing a little bit but oh, yeah. i'm trying to get more i'm trying to yeah. get more into it like i want to do my own stunts like jackie chan i'm a big fan of his and uh wesley nice. snipes and uh michael j white's and uh you know oh, yeah um, yeah, yeah. Job. like i love martial oh, arts yeah. and even jason david frank i love uh people that can really fight. So I do want to train yeah. and pay for it. But uh, yeah, with the soup though, I couldn't do as much movement because I didn't want it to rip and I was worried because <laughs> I'm much a cop. So I was like, I was limited to what I could do, but I want to train so I can do more in, in the suits or have more comfortable in the suits and stuff like that. So I, I, I'm gonna get there. Like I'm right now <laughs> rookie stage and stuff, but I want, I want to get there where I can do the stuff like they do in the TV shows. Uh, you're hitting the stances. You, you look great. Yeah, I mean, you're, hitting, you. you're hitting the stances. I mean, you look. Yeah, you're, you're ready oh, to get, she got it down. <laughs> go. But I haven't seen. Have you done like an R and B song um, about the Power Rangers? No, uh, but I want to. I actually got a couple of friends that actually like work on uh, like like fan films of Power Rangers. They do the beats and, and songs and stuff like that. I like actually the go -go and I met, Power Rangers. So yeah. that be, you know, that'd be awesome. Yeah, my favorite Ranger is Green Ranger, of course, Jason David yes. Frank, and I, I met his daughter, uh, Royal Sky, uh, and Ranger oh, yeah. Stop. And I told her, uh, hopefully I could get her on a song and stuff like that to do something like Power Ranger and to represent her dad, uh, Jason David Frank. So yeah. hopefully I can get, I could get her on a song. We could do something for her dad and Power Ranger fans. Oh, that's awesome. That is fantastic. <laughs> yeah. He was a fantastic human being yeah. and, yeah. uh, yeah. It's, it's just tragic, but yeah, he, he was, and, yeah. and I enjoyed him so much. He was my favorite too. <laughs> Yeah, um, because awesome. I'm doing that because that sounds like a really cool thing. Yeah, about you doing all that. So, yeah, but I would <laughs> love to hear a song. I think that'd be so neat. Yeah, if you come up with one before Imaginarium, I definitely let you sing it at Imaginarium because that I'll, would be so cool. I'll, I'll be yeah. all right. That's a bit. I'll be working on something. Like I'm, I'm gonna make right. sure it's really great and sounding so we could do that. Like, cause I, I would love to. Like, I'll be writing and coming up with ideas for that. Cause I want it to be like original, but also nostalgia yeah. for the fans. That yeah, awesome. that'd be amazing. Yeah, we <laughs> definitely have to record that and do like a you know YouTube. We that because we have several people at Imaginarium that can do really good recordings for you. You know, oh, and then wow. be able to share around. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we, 
We can do a skit with Jason. We have William an independent Allen. film festival, so we have a lot of filmmakers around. So, oh, that's <laughs> hey, Holly, yeah. we do a quick skit where Jason William Allen comes in as a villain or something, and he can come in and do a Power Ranger stuff. There you go. <laughs> Put the golf rocker in, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As the but, villain. <laughs> now, now is that if that's not enough, folks? I mean, we're talking about cosplay. We talked about filmmaking. We talked about music and recording and live performing. There's more, but wait, there's more. There's and yes, more. And and Darrell also I mentioned in the beginning is a game designer, and yes. he ah. is about to release a card game, folks, called Evidential Myths. So yes. yeah, busy, busy guy. Fine. So. Tell us a bit about the card games. That that's awesome. I love that. I know Demetrius does some of that too. But yeah, uh, tell, us, tell us about the card game. Oh uh, well, I always wanted to do my own card game. Well, I was working on a board game first, but I felt like it was so much money with board games. So I was like, let's just think about something that's like cheaper that we could get out um, sooner. So me and my brother was working and both wrote this project called Evidential Myths. Um, that's a supernatural uh, short short film that's, uh, you know, about supernatural crimes and things like that. And I was just thinking in my back of my head, I, I just didn't want this to just be a movie. I actually wanted this to, to expand to something bigger. And I'm a fan of like Buffy, Angel, all these things that got games and things like that. So I was like, what can we do with this? So. I came to my brother about like doing a car game and I was, and we both was like, how are we going to do this car game? And I was like writing like some of the rules and then he helped me edit the rules and come out with his ideas. And then the characters that we had from the film, we just start trying to put it like, how are we going to do this game? And it came out, then we did a test at CC's Pizza and people like we had our friends to test it out. They loved it. And it was a quick game. And we was like, yeah, that's something dope. Something they could play, you know, on a 15-minute break or lunch. Something oh, quick. Wow. Nothing it's quick. quick. Yeah, like nothing like <laughs> where we wanted a game where you could continue playing with your friend. It's like you could do up to four players. And uh -huh. it's, something, it's something where, like, yo, you and your friends, you know, 15-minute break or, like I said, your lunch break and you just want to do something because you're bored. It's, it's a quick game. It's not something like um, – magic or Yu-Gi-Oh was too difficult or anything but it's almost right. in that realm but it's more simpler so when we created this game we tested it out and teenagers and kids loved it like they was like oh, I'll tell my friends to buy this I was like yo this might be the big thing for us like the, the anything that's going to help us make money or get the audience uh -huh. or resources to do bigger things this card game so we started our first two or our first starter deck with four characters that's coming out this September probably the 20th I receive 100 decks of it nice. and then but we got seven decks like we have seven starter decks that will have about four characters in each deck where people can play like once you buy it's only be twenty dollars uh physically and then 23 oh, wow. on etsy oh yeah on etsy but you get like four character cards with uh each character gets about 14 cards each uh and but you get booster cards so we got booster cards too that you could buy and it's the strategy game so people call it like war where basically you start with 100 uh, po uh life points you and the opponent have a character card and basically each round whoever got the most attack points wins and you and you subtract from your attack points to their attack points and that's how you lower their light points now every round you get a chip every chip brown once you get three chips you could get you get some of your cards back about seven cards oh. back when you get to four to five chips you could use it for special powers or something like that depending on the character so we have it like fun like that we're so fast and easy almost like spades and ward together and i'm oh, wow. telling you people People will, will play. I'm gonna bring in the Imaginarium and y'all will play and I'm gonna tell you it's yeah. by the time you get the rules and it's so simple and how you play and, and things like that, you'll have fun. Well, we'll set you up a demo. I'll get you with uh Josh Palmer, our our yeah. uh, game hall guest, I mean a host. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we'll get you a, some some time set up where people could come play. And yeah. put that in the, the programming, but yeah, I definitely, I definitely want to check that out. But I'll, I'm 
probably going to be buying a deck. So yeah, I wouldn't know how to play prior to. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Yeah. Like, yeah, we, we, yeah, we, we make sure everybody, yeah, we make sure everybody tests it out before they buy it. So we're going to have like uh -huh. the prototype where they, they play it first before they buy Because I always believe in oh. giving people something they love and enjoy than just a cash grab. It's not that. I just believe it. We, me and my brother worked hard on this game and my sister Alicia, who helped us, that we believe like this game will be fun for people to play like this seriously is something i can see people playing all the time even and we eventually want to put on an app too so people can play on the app so it's it's gonna be it's gonna be dope oh wow that's awesome that's awesome so tell the folks uh, again where uh, to get uh, when it comes out on the 20th where they where can they find the card game and buy it? um etsy.com you will go to royalty virtue or you could type in evidential myths uh, uh starter deck and will be up on there i haven't put it out yet i already put you know like the name title all that on there i'm just waiting till i get the 100 decks that should be coming mm -hmm. september 20th once i have that then i will have the um the page up for it so people can you know people can order it and i can just ship it off once i receive the um the the order and stuff like that i can just ship it in i i didn't want to do like the pre-order thing because i didn't know how long it would take to get here from china um uh -huh. it, yeah so they do my stuff and i just wanted to wait till we actually got it physically so i could show them say hey, your your stuff is actually getting sent thank you it's not gonna take that long one or two days we'll sh sh ship it out to you right Nice. Oh, so I, I am. You have piqued my interest because <laughs> I love cards. I love magic, and but magic takes, oh, yeah. you know, it takes a lot of uh, keeping up with it. You have to yeah, learn yeah. a lot of the the lingo, the definitions before you ever start playing. Um, you know, and it takes time. I mean, there's some games that last. I've had games that last about two hours or more. You know, yeah, and, nah. and especially if you're playing like Commander. You know, it it takes a while. Well, and our card game is actually, if you want to see a testing of it, I actually got several video that's on YouTube. You can watch on YouTube right now. You type in Evidential Myths um, starter deck or or gameplay, or or if you even go to Royalty Virtue on YouTube and you go down the videos, you can see the game testings down my videos. You will see us playing with several other people at different locations. If you want to see how it looks and how the gameplay is kind of, it will be. So you okay. can watch the gameplay of it before you purchase or anything like that. Cool. Nice. And and I know my son Noah, he will he will <laughs> definitely be interested. He he's a big gamer too. So he will love Thank it. Yeah. Well, we, know, we know a lot we know a lot of gamers and definitely it sounds yeah. awesome. Yeah, we do. Sounds awesome. So uh, yeah. I know we're uh, getting close to the end of the show here. So yeah. I want to, um, is there anything um, that we have not discussed yet uh, that, that uh, you would like to cover? Because I think, yeah, we talked about a, a number of things that you're doing, but is there anything that we may have missed? What about to... what about the, the mental health advocate part of what you do? Yes, um, I, I was diagnosed with PTSD. Um, ADD, bipolar. So, and I came from a mental hospital several, uh, about was it 2015 or something like that, where I almost committed suicide. So, uh, right now, uh, well, since then, I've always been on the urge of helping people that deal with mental illness by doing art stuff. And when I was inside the mental hospital, they gave me like art stuff to do, and which helped me mm -hmm. out to feel better. And, um, and doing other activities so those are the things i work on really like that's why i'm so busy with my add you know like you see me doing right? so much art stuff it actually helps yep. with like my depression anxiety so for people that think mm -hmm. like me i want to help them say hey you can make it don't feel down about yourself do these things that's why i love cosplaying because i want to show people hey no matter your race no matter uh the, the your your how much money you got or or what side of town you are from or this thing for things you it might feel like we separated we all feel the same way in some shape or been through right. something so i want to bring us all together you know what i'm saying so that's why i really work on and more passionate about like the anything is putting smiles on people's faces and say hey i've been there 
I know what it's like to put a gun to your head and almost take your own life in front of your family or that you had down moments of yourself or you just didn't feel like people loved you or care about you. I had those moments and I was like, you can, you can, you can get out of that. Like it's people out there that can understand. And that's what the stuff I push out in in my work, you know, more time than anything. I, I, on my social media, I don't say nothing negative. I don't talk down on people. Only thing I push out is positivity. And right. hey, you don't have to be rich to be happy. You don't have to be rich to be successful. You don't have to to do what other people is doing to feel good about what you want to create and things like that. So that's why I push right. out more regardless, you know what I'm saying? I know people like to think of is uh was it preachy or too corny and stuff like that, but I don't care because that's something I represent and I know what it's like being a dark. So mm -hmm. it's like th those are things mm -hmm. that matter to me, you know, more than anything. That's I don't awesome. matter about anything Respect. that's going on in this world that separates us. I'm worried about things that can bring us together. Exactly. Exactly. Well, well, Respect I tell you. for that. And and Moon Moon yeah. commented in the in the chat room. He said, Hey, yeah. that's heavy. I know how big that is. I'm proud that you took a hold of that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mo. Yes. Oh, yeah. Respect. Total respect for that. I I too am ADD and PTSD, so I, I yeah. and anxiety is ridden. So I, I too understand that. And and our brains go 90 miles a minute. And <laughs> yeah. you know, we always have to work on a hundred things at once. Uh mm -hmm. and Steven, he don't understand how my brain <laughs> works that way. <laughs> well, no, let's well back back up just a little bit. That's you know, just being able to just do the 50 things at, at one one during one time like that. Yeah. Yeah, I, really, I, I, I have to focus, yeah. I have to be focused on one thing and then I focus on another thing, but I can't yeah. be yeah, yeah, I can't divert too. Yeah, quick. and I'm like throwing things at him like I need this and this and this and this and this <laughs> yeah. from you, and I've got this and this and this and this going <laughs> all at the same time. I'm talking to this person about this, this person about that, this, but yeah. But I thrive on chaos, so you know. Right. <laughs> you feel like, uh, but it's a good thing with both of y'all partnership because y'all balance each other. Because we do need yeah. that person, but like, oh, bring us back in, roll us back in when, when our mm -hmm. lives is getting chaotic or we got so much. Even myself, I have to kind of tell myself, is like, man, you got too many projects, too many ideas. <laughs> Even my brother. I show my brothers, like and my brother Christian, like projects and script ideas and things I want to do. They're like, hold on, let's get done with this first before you go to so Yeah, yeah, wait, yeah. wait. Yeah, on any projects. <laughs> yes. Yep. It is yeah, like yeah. my mind. <laughs> it's like craft projects, you know. I want to yeah. build this, I want to do that. I want to yeah. paint this, I want to do this, yeah. you know, and then I've got imaginary stuff to do. And then I've got, you know, we run a publishing company, and so we've got that to do. I'm editing, I'm, you know, doing all the, I, I do the programming for imaginary. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, there's 10,000 things going on all at the same time, plus um, helping to homeschool the three oldest grandkids that live with us and wow yeah yeah That's so amazing. it's a lot and and i feel i feel that sometimes our add is our superpower uh -huh. yeah i really I tell people that i tell people that i tell yes. you it's a superpower if you know how to use it and you focus That's on it. the positive things of it instead of just harping on the yep. negatives it definitely is a superpower I totally believe that because yeah. we can get so much done and and we, yeah we do have pals of things and we procrastinate yeah. on some things but man we get a lot done in a short <laughs> period of time when we're focused it's mm -hmm. amazing what we can get done so yeah <laughs> yeah yes you're absolutely right I'm telling you I tell people that all the time I'll say don't look at it as a bad thing even when I talk to people who are autistic like I like you yep. it's a superpower don't don't it hide is. it. Don't deny it. Don't nope. don't try to feel like something wrong with you. You use it as a nope. superpower. That's Realize it. Realize what you have. Mm -hmm. That's, That's it. Cool. Yeah, I That's have cool. three grandchildren out of the six that are autistic, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I'm like, guys, it's an evolutionary superpower. Uh, yeah. It's got to work out some kinks, but I said, you know, you're a lot better off. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, right. And yeah. and you think on a right. whole different level than we do, and, uh -huh. and I think it's wonderful. All right, like you make them feel good. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, Absolutely. that's it. Absolutely. And and well, everybody, I, like you said, is dealing with one thing or another. Uh, if you're human, you you definitely 
have dealt with some anxiety, some depression, some, you know, we yeah. ebb and flow. And mm -hmm. so we have our good times, we have our bad times, and it's on how you deal with it. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the chemicals involved. And yeah. that's where, you know, like medication, I don't think there's so much of a stigma anymore. And I think that's wonderful because your brain can be sick just like your body. It's, yeah. it's part of your body. And mm -hmm. if you're lacking certain chemicals, then the medications can help. And yeah. I have a daughter that's bipolar, you know, and mm -hmm. she has to have her medications and she knows mm -hmm. that. And mm -hmm. without them, she's a total different person. It's not her, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and she knows that. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm pro medication. If you need it, take them. Mm -hmm. There's right. nothing wrong with that. Yeah, that exactly. Nothing wrong with you. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody got their challenges. Everybody got their obstacles right. in life, no matter what. Yep. Well, I love where you're coming from on everything. I mean, man, I mean, I'm just like just sitting back here, just listening to all the different projects you're doing and the kind of messages you have and the kind of things you, you know, that drive you and focus you. And I, I tell you, you're gonna you're gonna fit in great with us. <laughs> yeah, you are, oh, man, our our kind of guy for sure. Look, we are family. You know, what I'm saying we yeah. got to support yeah. each other. We yeah. we are family. And you're definitely gonna find a home. At yes. Imaginarium, you, you're going to find you. a home with us, oh, yeah. and, oh, yeah. Yeah. and we're going to welcome you with open arms. And and <laughs> oh, yeah. you're going to be like, why haven't I been before? <laughs> right. I, I swear, like I wanted to stay longer when I first came with the war. I just had to uh, leave yeah. out, but I, I'm glad to get another opportunity. And then hopefully Demetrius show up that to come. Normally, I know he yes. mostly goes there all the time. Yes. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so you'll be able to talk, hopefully, both of us at the same time, you know. You so that'd, that'd, be, be that'd, be, that'd be awesome. That would be awesome. But <laughs> yeah. uh, go ahead and that'd tell us. Um, okay, first, um, tell us anything that you have going on as far as convention appearances, live performances. Get, let us know if there's anything on your schedule. And then after that, if you just tell us uh, how to connect with you online as far as uh, people listening, where to follow you and all that. So, uh, okay. yeah, give us give us both of those things. Well, right now, the only locked in uh, convention I have is yours, Imaginarium, for next year. Uh, I'm, I'm working on getting bookings for other conventions like Comic Con, Pop Con, Gen Con. Um, I plan on getting booked, I think, uh, was it Dragon Con next year? Yep. Uh, yeah, Ranger, Ranger, Ranger yeah. Stop, um, Mo, Momo Con, and yep. Atlanta. I believe those mm -hmm. are the ones I'm looking into and some ones that more about video games or card game type of cons. Um, I'm releasing my movies at the hopefully close by the, before the end of this year. Uh, Power Rangers, Deep Morph and Evidential Mist. Um, and me and my brother work on our card games. Several of our decks would be out. I think our starter ones and starter twos, if we sell out and things will be out um two starter decks will be out by the end of this year working on our third starter deck and by january uh besides that uh i'm just getting ready for next year right now this is my time to get ready for next year and you want to follow me on social media it is official d-a-r-e-l-l-317 that's official d-a-r-e-l-l-317 on you can follow me on facebook instagram uh and TikTok. uh you can follow me also royalty virtue with an i instead of a y on facebook instagram and TikTok. uh you can also follow me on dang uh the rail the cosplayer I think that's one on Facebook. I'm sorry. Uh, I got so many pages. I'll be forgetting so many. I know it is. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. <laughs> I'll be forgetting them. But yeah. So, um, but yeah. So you could just follow me on there. And my uh, my website is royaltyvirtue.net. So you want to go on my website, email me or anything like that, royaltyvirtue.net. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Holly, this has been an amazing show and, and thank yes. you Darrell, for, for yeah. joining us. I told you folks, I, I said, you. we're on a hot streak lately. I mean, we're having good, we are. Good, show after good show and it's yet another one. So thanks for, thank you very much for joining us tonight, Darrell. Really appreciate it. 
No, thank you so much. I had absolutely fun. I love talking to y'all, and I can't wait to see y'all in person next year. Yes. We're going to have a blast. Yeah, we are. Thank you. We're going to do so much. It's, it's going to be a fun time, and it it's something to remember. You got Definitely. it, man. Definitely. <laughs> All right. Well, Holly, um, I'll, I'll let you do the honors. You can close okay. us up. Well, thank you, Darrell. And and and, you. and yes, we would we would definitely be seeing you, and, and I'll be talking to you very soon, and yes. working out all the good stuff and keeping you busy. And <laughs> yes. yes, thank you. Let letting you, uh, you know, show all your all your talents, which are, are a plethora, and I yes. love it. You know, you. Uh, I love all the avenues you have went down, but yeah, thank you for being a great guest and we will talk soon. Yeah. And I want to invite everybody next Wednesday, 9 PM Eastern yeah. standard time. Another great guest, another great chat on Podbean. You could re listen to our recording on Spotify, Amazon, iTunes, and all of your other great podcast platforms have a good night and be creative for the rest of the week good night